Hello everyone, welcome again. Well, in this video, we are going to discuss one problem statement. So let us suppose I have three test class with me. Test 1, test 2, and test 3. And the problem statement over here is that I want to fix the sequence of execution for all these three class. So sequence can be test 2, test 3, test 1 or test 1, test 3, test 2. So let me show you how you can do this with the help of test ng. So first of all I will add these three classes inside my project. So first will be test 1 and this class sorry this class will have a simple test method. So public public void test case this out and it is going to just print the class name so this dot get class dot to string and I need to use at the rate test annotation with this method Similarly, I will add test 2 and test 3. So this will be your test 2 and test 3. Now I will create one test ngxml file for running this all three classes. So test ng convert to test ng and this will be test ng 2 XML. So inside this XML file I will add other classes also. So this will be test 2 and test 1. So if I want to fix the sequence of execution just the way I have specified over here that can be done with the help of an attribute provided by test ng that is preserve order. So preserve order you need to supply true. In that case test ng will follow this sequence for executing the for executing the test class. For example I'll make it 3 and make it 2. Now if I run it So if you look at the console, the order of execution is test 1, test 3, test 2, test 1, test 3 and test 2. If I change the order again, so now this time the order of execution will be test 2, test 3 and test 1. So as you can see that. Okay. However, if I make it false. So in that case, test ng will not maintain the order of execution the way you have specified inside the test ng XML. So if I run it, so as you can see that now test 1, test 2 and test 3 is getting executed. However, the order is test 2, test 3, test 1. So with the help of this attribute, you can fix the sequence of executing of test class. Now let us suppose this was at the class level and I want to do the same thing at the method level. So let's say I add one more method over here and this will be test case sorry test case 1 and this will be test case 2. Now I want this test case 2 should execute first than the test case 1. So in this case you need to take the help of an attribute called priority. So priority equal to 1, sorry 2 and in this case the priority will be 1. So you have to make sure one thing is that the lower the integer value the highest the priority. So if I run it the first ex first method which will get executed will be test case 2 then test case 1. So here I will make it test class 1 sorry 2 and 1. 
So if I run it, so as you can see that at the console, test class 2, then test class 1. However, if I change the priority, I'll make it 2 and this will be 1. So in that case, the test case, sorry, test test case method, sorry, test case one method will get executed first, then the test case two. As you can see that. Now similar thing can be achieved with the help of depends on attribute. So I can create a dependency among the method, and you can again fix the sequence of execution. So here. I need to just specify the name of method on which there is a dependency. So whenever you use this attribute, in that case, it is going to execute the this method first, then the dependent method. So if I run it, so test class one, test class two. Similarly, I can do for this also. So here it will be two. So if I run it, so now test class 2, then test class 1. So in this manner, you can create a fixed sequence of execution of test class with the help of preserve order attribute. And if you want to fix the sequence of execution of test method inside the class, either you can take the help of priority or depends on method attribute. So that's all for this video and thanks for watching.